Hello, I am Dr. T.K. Swami, Surgical Gastroenterologist. In this video, I will show you how to put the ports for tip repair, totally extra peritoneal repair of hernia. Why many surgeons they prefer tap instead of tap is that it is difficult to learn. There are a lot of difficulties. The learning curve is very steep. If you know what are those difficulties and if you can overcome those difficulties, you will do the surgery in a better way and faster way. In this video, in the first half of the video, I will show you how we are putting the ports and in the second half, I will tell you what are the difficulties and how to overcome them. Generally, we use three ports, the sub-umbilical port for the camera. We don't use the balloon, we use the telescopic dissection. We use the contralateral port and we are not using the midline port. If you are a midline port person, you keep doing it. But we feel it is very comfortable and uh, we, we don't strain our shoulder and we don't strain our back and deploying the mesh in bilateral hernia is very easy with the contralateral port rather than in the midline port. Without much ado, let us get into the video on C. The surgeon stands on the left side of the patient. The monitor will be moved to the foot end of the patient. Once the surgeon makes the port for the camera, he will be moving to the head end of the patient. The camera person will be standing to the left of the surgeon and the staff nurse will be on the right side of the surgeon. Once you make 1 to 1.2 centimeter incision, dissect nicely the skin and subcutaneous tissue, take a gauze piece, there is a bleeding. Most of the time this can be controlled with a gauze piece. See until you see the anterior rectus sheath on the right side. Put a small nick in the anterior rectus sheath. You must see the muscle through the nick. Take a gauze piece, wipe nicely. Widen that gap with the blunt artery forceps. Make a big work opening and then retract the muscle laterally. While retracting the muscle, you have to take the whole muscle laterally. If you go into the middle of the muscle, the muscle will bleed. Because the blood supply is coming from lateral to medial, it will bleed. So take away all the muscle from medial to lateral so that you can see the posterior rectus sheath. Then take the beveled uh, tenement trocar and push it inside. While taking the retractor, it might be difficult. For that, we have designed a retractor with a depression in the center so that the retractor can glide along the trocar without any difficulty. The best tip is use a smaller retractor. If you use a smaller retractor, it will be easier. After inserting the trocar, you have to close the wound because the wound is little bigger than the tenemum. So you have to close this, otherwise the air will escape and the patient might develop subcutaneous emphysema. So take wider bite. We are using 1-0 silk and to fill the gap you can use the with gauze piece. Thrust nicely so that there is no gap. If there is a gap, the air will come out of the rectus sheath and the patient will develop subcutaneous emphysema. Fold the excess gauze piece, then you can tie it over on this. While tying, you have to Tie it tightly, tighten it nicely so that there is no gap. Then you have to tie it around the side channel. You have to leave a little bit of gap so that there is a play so that the trocar will go in and come when you are removing the scope the trocar will come out so to avoid that you have to tie it to the side channel 
it has to look like this at the end. Now, the next step is the telescopic dissection. We use the zero degree scope for dissection. The moment you enter, you see whether you are at the right track. Two points you must remember. One is the areola tissue. Number two, you must go below the inferior epigastric artery. That's very, very important. Whenever you see a vessel, you come out and then you change the direction. You can go up to the symphysis pubis. You follow the cobweb, that is the areola tissue. This areola tissue is in between the anterior and posterior lamina of the transversalis fascia. You see, when I see the vessel, I went to the left side. You avoid the vessel or you come out and then see and then go. Your movement must be forward and backward, not to the sideways. Now, next our aim is to put in the right stroka. To insert the right stroka, you must dissect the muscle anteriorly. The rectus muscle must go anteriorly and you must be able to see the linea seminaris. See the inferior epigastric is anterior and you can see on the right side the linea seminaris. You put a small nick at the linea seminaris and then push in the troca. You can use the needle also before putting the troca. You can pass in the needle and then see whether you are on the right track or not. Most of the time if you are in the wrong plane you will enter the peritoneal cavity or if you come more medially you will injure the inferior epigastric artery or you will come closer to the camera port and the camera port and this right port will sword fight together. So you should not come too medially, you should not go too laterally. If you go too laterally you will enter the peritoneal cavity. If you come too medially, you will injure the inferior epigastric artery. Once you are inside, our next aim is to put in the left troca. The most important thing is you should not be in a hurry to put in the left troca. You have to move the peritoneum well down so that you don't enter the peritoneal cavity. Most of the dissection can be done with the single port, with the right hand. Majority of the direct hernias can be done with the single port, but it is always better to have a left working port. You will be very comfortable. Now I am following the areola tissue. You have to dissect from before backwards. You have to start from the pubic tubercle and come towards the umbilicus. You should not start from the umbilicus and go down. That's the posterior lamina I am cutting. Just follow the areola tissue, nothing else. If you are on the right plane, there will not be any bleeding. If you come across small vessels, you can just coagulate them. Don't think that they are very small and they will cause a little bit of bleeding. The whole area will become red. Even if it is a small bleed, it will look a bigger one. So, dissect nicely so that the peritoneum goes down, far down. Now you see, there is no peritoneum. You can push in the left trochar or the linea seminaris. That completes the trochar placement. Next, we will see the difficulties. There are mainly three difficulties you come across when you are putting the ports. Number one is the bleeding. Number two is the peritoneal entry. And three is the inferior epigastric artery injury. The bleeding can occur in the skin incision or when you go above the inferior epigastric artery. In the skin, if there is a bleeding, that can be controlled easily with a gauze piece. When there is a spurt, the gauze piece may not control. So in that case, you have to use the diathermy. 
Most of the time, when we are uh, doing laparoscopic surgery, we don't take the diathermy pencil. In that case, you can use the Maryland. Though it is a little bit cumbersome, you can use the Maryland. When there is a spurt, you should not keep on digging inside the pool of blood. This is very important. So you have to avoid bleeding right from the skin incision. See, you can use the gauze piece until you see the posterior rectus sheath. Then you can push in the trocar. Next is the peritoneal entry. The peritoneum can be in entered in many places, mainly four places. One in the midline and the medial border of the rectus muscle. Number two are the linea seminalis, where you put the right port and on the left port. These are the four places you commonly get into the peritoneal cavity when you are putting the ports. When you are putting incision, if you use a leaven blade, what happens? It produces a small nick in the linea alba. When you insert the artery forceps, the artery forceps goes exactly into the defect created by the leaven blade and you get into the peritoneal cavity. So it is always better to use a 15 blade rather than a 11 blade. If you are very confident, you can use a 11 blade. You see to that, you don't go below the skin and subcutaneous tissue. Use a blunt tipped artery forceps, which is seen on the right side. Don't use a sharp one. Don't use a 11 blade. If you are using a 11 blade, you must have a good control that you don't produce even a small nick in the linea alba. Suppose you have opened the peritoneum. It doesn't matter. You can do two things. One, you can convert this into a tap. Most of the time it is not necessary. You can switch up this defect which is created in the peritoneum. I am using the 30 0 y and you have to close the opening airtight. Otherwise the air will get into the peritoneal cavity. Suture it nicely. You can put a continuous suture or an interrupted suture. Here I am going to use the interrupted suture. The same suture material we are going to use for the skin suture also. We use the subcuticular stitch at the end. So the same 30 we are going to use. See there is a little gap. I want to close that also. See to that you don't take bite in the bowel. It's very important. You must take it under vision. Again, switch it nicely. I want to conserve the thread. That's why I'm putting with the needle holder. Otherwise, I will use hand. Three zero or two zero. You can use. You can use either a PDS or a vicar. cut it and then you go laterally use gauze piece wipe nicely and then move all the fat away then you incise whenever you take the leaven blade you must have a good control support with a little finger then next comes the inferior epigastric artery injury this can happen in two places while you are dissecting with the scope, if you go above the artery, you are likely to injure. And number two, when you are putting the right working port and the left working port. Before putting the right working port, you have to see the linea. Linea similaris has to be cleanly demonstrated. That's very important. You have to demonstrate it nicely. See, you can see the posterior rectus sheath and push all the muscle away anteriorly you see below the posterior rectus sheath on the right side you can see the linear seminaris the trocar has to come exactly at the linear seminaris if you go medially you are likely to injure the artery and you will come closer to the camera port if you go too laterally you will enter the peritoneal cavity so you have to come exactly at the linear seminaris 
So you can insert a needle and then see whether you are going in the right direction or not. Then you insert the trocar. Then there will not be any problem. Initially, if you use the scissor, the scissor will touch the trocar, so the muscle will jump. So it is better initially if you use a hook, make a little space and then insert the scissor, it will be easier. If there is no vessel, you can use the scissor. Next is the, our next aim is to put the left working trocar. The trick in putting the left working trocar is, you should not be in a hurry to put the left working trocar. The beginners, they will be in a hurry to put the trocar, so they get into the peritoneal cavity. You have to dissect nicely, the whole area can be dissected with a single trocar. Most of the direct hernias can be repaired with a single port. But it is not necessary, you will not be comfortable, so it is always better to put a, another port, left side port. You have to dissect from before backwards. Start from the pubic tubercle and come up. Don't start at the umbilicus. If you do that, you will enter into the peritoneal cavity. So create nice space there, anteriorly, come from before backwards. Again, I stress you should not be in a hurry to put in the left trocar. Follow the cobweb, follow the areola tissue. Even if the small vessel, you have to coagulate and then go. Now, I have come closer to the umbilicus. Go in small increments. Even if you make a small rent in the peritoneal cavity, it doesn't matter. You can put the patient in the head down and you can keep operating, there is no problem. But you should not make a bigger opening. That is the posterior lamina of the transversus fascia. Once you cut, you see the areola tissue, then dissect, start dissecting. Before putting the left trocar, you must move the peritoneum fully down and you must be 100% sure that the peritoneum is far away. Then only you must put the left trocar. You see the peritoneum has gone down nicely. Still I am dissecting a little bit closer to the umbilicus. Here you can use the diathermy liberally. Only when you go closer to the cord you should not use. Otherwise you can definitely you can use the diathermy. Then only you will be are doing the surgery without much of bleeding. Now you see the anterior abdominal wall is very clean. There is only one layer of the transverse fascia there. The peritoneum has gone down nicely down. Now you can boldly put the left trocar. If you are not sure, you can again you and push in the needle and then see whether it you are on the right track or not. Then you insert the straight grasper, then you can start dissecting. To summarize, use 15 blade instead of 11 blade for making incisions. Use a blunt tipped artery forceps rather than a sharper one. While doing telescopic dissection, see to that you go below the inferior epigastric artery, not above the artery. While putting the right trocar, be at the linear seminaris and don't go medially. If you go medially, you will come closer to the camera port. If you go laterally, you will enter the peritoneal cavity. While putting the left trocar, you should not be in a hurry. You have to dissect the peritoneum well down and then you put the left trocar. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this video is useful. Your comments are welcome. Thank you.